Hi, this is Tracy Takahama Espinosa, and this is a video to explain the instructional design of our course Psychology 1609, the Neuroscience of Learning and Introduction to Mind, Brain, Health, and Education. In this course, we felt uh, very happy that we were able to combine certain tools that might be common, but in a very special way, and we think this is kind of unique. It was something that was well received by the students. Within the general format of the course, we created a modality that was a bit different from things that are out there so far. Many of you are familiar with MOOCs or distance learning or courses that are done as a web conference in which you do have students face-to-face -face, uh, in synchronous time. But what we did was a flipped classroom with a two-hour-a-week synchronous modality where the students did plenty of work before they came to the live class, watched our prepared video beforehand, and did readings and additional research, took some quizzes, did some discussion boards, and then came to the live class. And within the live class structure, then, we were able to go deeper into the information, pull things apart when we were together or in synchronous time. This particular class met on Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which meant that the students really worked on a schedule that, that hovered around that particular date. But we've done this on other days of the week as well, and it seems to work out independent of the day of the week that you begin the class, just so long as the order of activities is clear to the students. The course had four different types of grading. There were quizzes each week. There was class participation, which was graded by a reflection paper after the synchronous meeting as well as after each section. Then there were the discussion boards in which a student replied to a prompt each week, and then they had two weeks to reply to at least two other learners. There was also a long-term semester project that, that each student chose they, and that they thought was of most importance to them that they wanted to go deeper in. But we also had as a goal within that project that they learn a process of how to reflect on questions within this field and what kinds of quality information could they find and where. Because our class had a both graduate students as well as undergraduate students as well as people who took the class for no credit, we as a teaching team had to figure out how to differentiate all of those different things. So graduate students obviously had more work to do, they had to cite more sources, they had to read more than the undergraduate students, and we found that this requirement was quite easy to handle uh, within our grading rubric as well. Another element of the course which was very unique was that we have kind of an, an infinite rewrite policy within certain time frames. So after each month, at the end of February, at the end of March, at the end of April, the students had the opportunity to resubmit any work that had been done with, that was covered the month before. So for example, at the end of February, students could go back and revisit all of their assignments for weeks one through four and decide if they wanted to rewrite anything or resubmit for a better grade. The students let us know that this was one of the strongest elements for them that improved their student learning outcomes. The ability to resubmit and learn from their mistakes was one of the greatest elements that factored into their enjoyment of the class. We also had what were called bundles within our classroom site. These were readings, videos, podcasts that we have been collecting over the years to create quick reference points for the students on the topics of the week. So on the home page, aside from the general description of the course, we divided the course outline by the weeks of classes, as well as right below that, the bundles that were related to each of those. We tried to make it easy on the students so that each of the different weeks had a similar structure, and students were asked to do seven or eight things each week. First, they were given a cue as to what were the main topics, what the big ideas or takeaways should be from that class. And then they were asked to do several things before the face-to-face -face class. Before the students got to class, they were asked to take a weekly quiz. This quiz served as a baseline of knowledge. What is it that they already knew about the information before they had any class at all? There's really nothing attached to this because they were able to retake that quiz as many times as they wanted to until the end of that grading period. The second thing they were asked to do is to revisit what happened the week before and to look on the discussion boards and make sure they'd replied to two other learners to get the full grade for the discussion boards. The third thing they were asked to do is to hook into the weekly video. Weekly video was a, between a 50 minutes and an hour and 10 minutes long, and it was basically what a university professor would do in front of a traditional class, uh, where you give the information, where you lecture to the students, where you uh, fill it with full, full of dates, facts, uh, theories, concepts. This information was meant to be viewed by the students before they came to class so that when they did come to the class we could unpack this. This is one of the things that we we're particularly proud of of this course is that this flipping format with a synchronous class really made a great difference to the students. Even though we were 100% virtual, all of us, this did give the students a way in to be able to go deeper into the information throughout the week. The fourth thing they were asked to do is to visit the bundle that was associated with that particular week. So for example in week three, 
The bundle was on neuroplasticity. And what the students found within the bundle were further instructions. They were told, please skim the types of topics that are covered within this bundle. Then please remember to watch the weekly video before you do anything else. Then they were told that they had to watch at least one of the instructor picks. These were things that we decided really had the core concepts. These were either, again, articles, videos, or podcasts. Then they were encouraged to go into the additional resources and read at least or watch at least one other thing that was in the bundle. The key idea in the bundle is that they were multiple entry points for the students. A student who knew nothing about the topic could come in and watch a 14 second uh, cartoon video about the concept of neuroplasticity. A medium range student could watch a TED talk, a 20 minute TED talk on this. Uh, and an advanced student could watch a four hour long lecture from a Nobel Prize on the same concept. So the idea here of creating the bundles was to create multiple entry points for students because the core concept in mind, brain, health and education that all new learning passes through the filter of prior experience and some students had more experience than others. So those students who had a lot of experience could go deeper into the materials and read a more sophisticated article, for example. Whereas some students who felt that they just needed a, a base, a very beginner entry point, could also do that through the bundles. They were then asked to go to the discussion board prompt for that week. And they were given very explicit instructions about how they should reply. We were kind of hard on the students and gave a very strict word limit. And the rubric was pretty sophisticated and allowed them to see when they had really gone deeper into their information. For example, there were no posts in, in our class that were like, oh, I loved your idea, great thinking. They really had to show that they understood the information and that they had to have a, a significant exchange with other people about the information and cite good sources on this. So they were generally given a single sentence prompt or, or description. And then they were asked to write a 250 word response to that. And then as again, as we mentioned before, they had to reply to at least two other learners. One thing that we found that was really particularly gratifying is that many students would not just reply to two other people. They enjoyed the topic and they would go deeper. They would reply to multiple learners at the same time. And in other cases, we found that the conversations weren't just somebody posts and somebody replies, but that these became dialogues and conversations that went on sometimes two, three, four, five, six, seven exchanges between the students in the course of the week. This was uh, wonderful and we could actually document that there were over 3,300 different exchanges or different discussions that occurred between the students thanks to, I think, the clarity of the discussion prompts as well as the instructions here. After the reply to the discussion boards, they were asked to then post their own questions. By this stage, they have taken a quiz, they've watched this week's video and explored the bundle, then they've looked into this week's prompt. Then they're asked to think now, what is it that I still don't get or still don't understand or what are the things that stand out for me that need clarification? And they were asked to post those before the synchronous class occurred. It led them to a space that says, if you have any questions about the materials, the information, the quiz that you had, the discussion board that you'd like to see clarified in this week's class, please post them here. This allowed us as a teaching team to focus in on student learning needs during the face-to-face -face class. Finally, the seventh thing they were asked to do had to do with retaking the quiz. So the students were encouraged to retake the quiz as many times as necessary to get a perfect score if they liked, uh, and they were asked to do this at this stage of the game. So these were the seven basic things. In some of the weeks, you would also find an eighth prompt that had to do with the semester project. The students had seven different points where they had to submit smaller pieces of their projects along the way throughout the semester. So in some weeks, there was an eighth submission that had to do with semester projects. After all of this preparation work, they have the face-to-face -face class. In this course, we required that of the 15 weeks, they had to attend 10 of the classes in a face-to-face -face format. They had to do this live. For those times that they didn't or weren't able to attend the live classes, we recorded the class and the students had to still do the homework, which was to review the recorded video and do the reflection paper that was related to the live synchronous class. Also within this format, we included the chat transcript of that day. Why did we do that? We decided to include the chat because along with the live class interaction, we also found that there were multiple exchanges by individual students along the way. So the students not only participated and were visible in the class to their peers, but also in other points, we had almost like a parallel conversation occurring in, in several points where the students would ask for clarification of ideas and go deeper and share resources with each other within the chat format. We found some people, many people actually, who actually attended the live class would actually go back and either watch the video again of the live class 
or review the chat transcript because there was oftentimes parallel conversations going on. And this is something that's also very unique to this particular format because imagine yourself in a live traditional class. You don't usually like it when people are chatting behind your back or not paying attention to what's going on in the class. Well, we found that these different ways of approaching the information were very valuable to different students. And students actually felt at liberty during the class to spend a lot more time in this chat format as well because they realized that, well, they could always go back and they could always go back and review the information that had been shared within the video context, freeing up their time or allowing them to pay attention to the shared information or the shared resources that they found in the chat board. So this meant that they had really a parallel class. They shared links to ideas, shared book names, uh, went deeper into the information. And at the same time, though, that they were able to go back if they desired to the actual video of the, of the taped class. Finally, after the class and within an hour of finishing the live class, they were asked to do this 3 to one response. Three things they didn't know beforehand, two things that were so interesting they're going to keep researching it or tell somebody else, and one thing that they would change about their personal professional practice. This was phenomenal as a general reflection point at the very end of the course where the students actually looked at this cumulative list of things that they, they had learned and it was a very powerful tool to have. We did this after every live class, including all of the live sections. At this stage, they were also then asked at the end of the week to give us anonymous feedback. So we asked them, you know, what worked, what didn't work, what could we approve upon next week. This gave us a lot of pointers on ways that we could react to the different learning needs of different students in better ways. And then they were told, you know, go to the next prompt and you're going to start all over again, which led them to the next week. And the next week, as you can see, always had the same format, always had the quiz, always had the discussion post of the previous week to make sure they'd answered other learners the video of the week, and then the bundles. In some cases, you can see there were several bundles for the single topic. Then they had to do discussion board, as we mentioned before. They could retake the quiz if they like. And in this case, again, here's the submission uh, for the semester project. They attended the live class. They could review the live class as well as the transcripts, do the reflection paper, and give us feedback if they liked. So each week had a similar pattern to it. Also had at least one section. In this case, there was a section, for example, on the week related to memory. Uh, the section was on the seven sins of memory and talking about forgetting. And graduate students had to attend at least half of the sections live and watch all of the sections before they were given full credit. These videos required for the grad students, they were optional for undergraduates. We also posted a transcript of the chats as well as access to the slides. This is the overall general structure of the course. It was a 100% online flipped course with a synchronous element that included multiple grading points as well as the ability to rewrite homework throughout the semester. This structure created multiple ways uh, that students could interact with the information including multiple entry points related to the bundles of the mini libraries, uh, the discussion boards that they could have exchanges with as well as the live class and individual sections. The final point worth mentioning, I think, is that different graded activities, and there were multiple ones, which was also something the students really appreciated. It wasn't just one final exam or one simple project, but they had multiple ways of showing off their knowledge in different ways and different formats throughout the semester. And also the fact that we had well-developed rubrics, which was really helpful in giving feedback to the students, but that we also took the time and the teaching team was encouraged to give extensive feedback to the individual students our best to try to keep uh, communication lines very, very open with the students, use the mail as well as the announcement section. This was also something noted by the students that they really enjoyed. Why did we create a 100% online flip course with a synchronous session that included discussion boards as well as a semester project uh, and reflection papers? Basically, after you know, 10 years of taking online courses and uh, four years of teaching this particular class and, and two years of being in charge of the online education at a small university, I have fallen in love with this particular format for one main goal. It really is a deeper way to learn. And the students are much more intimate in this online format than I have actually experienced in any other structure. They felt supported. They said they learned a lot. And it was a powerful thing for me as a teacher. I'm happy to say that the general feedback that we received from the course was, was quite high. They would generally recommend the course to others, uh, that they really enjoyed the interaction with the teaching staff and felt that that was a, a great support to them. And most importantly, that they also thought that this particular instructional design facilitated their learning. This was really gratifying to see after so much effort uh, into the class and see that it really paid off survey that we also did with the students in week 14 
We did find, and we asked them in week 16, was it true? Did they really flip it? Did they really watch the videos beforehand? Did they do all that work that we asked them to before they came to the class? And the students said that yes, they did do it, and they did find it particularly helpful. They also really enjoyed the way that we differentiated in the bundles their entry points into the information. And they found that the content that was shared within the recorded video prior to class was very helpful, and that could have been the entire class. They found that it was particularly useful to be able to go deeper into the information then at that stage. So they really enjoyed the extra support videos that we put online for them, explaining things like the APA format, going into de more detail about why they were doing a semester project and what was expected of them. Uh, having those things recorded and available within the classroom structure also gave them additional confidence that what they were doing was correct. There's this pain to gain ratio. Uh, the students said, you know, pretty much overwhelmingly, yes, they worked a lot harder in this particular class, but they also said they learned much more than they did in other formats. So we really believe in this instructional design. We really hope it's something that will catch on. And I hope this explanation was uh, helpful in explaining all the elements we included. Thanks a lot.